Hi, I'm Dan Smith, and I'm going to teach you how to play bar chords. Now, there's two main kinds of bar chords to learn. The first are E-shaped bar chords, and then there's also A-shaped bar chords. So E-shaped bar chords, the way you want to get started with those is you start with an E chord. And instead of using your first, second, and third fingers, like I'm doing here, you're going to start with your second, third, and fourth fingers in the same string and fret positions. But then you take that shape and you slide it up one fret. And then you're going to bar, meaning hold down all six strings with your index finger across the first fret. And now this is no longer E. This is now an F chord. Now this is also a good opportunity to learn the letter names of notes as you move up the neck. So after E comes F. And then if you take this same shape, you can move it up one fret and you'll have a whole new chord. You don't have to learn any new shapes. This is now F sharp. And then after F sharp, you take the same shape, move it up one fret, you got G. And on the fourth fret, it's G sharp. After G sharp, the alphabet starts over and you go to A. And then A sharp. And then B. And then there's no sharp after B, so you just go straight to C. And then C sharp. And then D. And so on and so forth. D sharp. And then once you get up to the 12th fret, which I can't quite reach there, then that would be E again. So on the 12th fret, the double dots on your guitar, that's where everything starts over. So those are E-shaped bar chords, but here's the thing. Any variation you play of an E chord, like an E minor, or an E seventh, right? If you're not familiar with E minor, just you get an E minor by taking your finger off the third string of an E chord. That makes it a minor chord. And for E seventh, you take your ring finger off the fourth string, and that makes it an E seventh. Those same two shapes translate to all these E-shaped bar chords. So if we go back to that same kind of device that I used to uh, show you how to do the E-shaped bar chords, right? you start with your second, third, and fourth fingers, but let's say you want to do minor bar chords. So you take your finger off the third string, in this case would be your middle finger, and you slide your fingers up one fret, and then you bar with your index finger. Now this is no longer E minor, it's now F minor, and so on and so forth, F sharp minor, G minor, G sharp minor, and as you move up the neck, you have every single minor chord you ever wanted in your whole life. Now, same thing's true for an E seventh shape, right? Except now I'm going to use just my second finger on the third string of the first fret and my ring finger on the fourth string of the second fret. I'm going to take that's still an E seven. I'm just using different fingers, and now I'm going to slide it up one fret, bar with my index finger. Now this is an F seventh. F sharp 7th on the 2nd fret, G 7th, and so on and so forth. So those are E-shaped bar chords, but let's talk about finger placement, because if you've never played bar chords before, my guess is if you're trying this along with me, it might be a little challenging for you right now, right? You might be playing an F and it sounds like that, right? You get a lot of muted strings. So the first thing that you might want to try to help yourself is try holding your index finger on the outside edge of your index finger. Not the flat inside part, but the outside edge, right? So you have to kind of, I always think of it as like you have to kind of wave at yourself when you're holding your finger down like that. That's gonna give you a straighter surface to hold against the, fing uh, hold against the strings. And you'll be much more likely to get better tone. Now the other thing to keep in mind is you really gotta get your wrist underneath the neck of the guitar. And another a mistake that a lot of people make is they hold their finger up too high. See how my finger's kind of up above the neck like that? Keep it down below so that you're really only using the first two sections, the upper two sections of your finger. Now, all of this is probably gonna be fairly uncomfortable if you've never done it before. Be patient with yourself. Bar chords take a little while. They might come easily for you, but for most people, bar chords take a little while. and. You know, let's be honest, there's some pain involved. It's going to seem like you're not strong enough to hold it in place, but that's a big misconception about playing guitar in general, is that it's about hand strength. It's really about hand flexibility and learning to place your fingers in just the right way so that you don't have to squeeze. But initially, until you develop that flexibility, you may have to squeeze a little bit. Whatever pain you feel, 
is temporary, I promise you. I don't, I'm not in pain when I play bar chords just because I've developed flexibility and it's pretty subtle flexibility. So like I said, be patient with yourself. However, there's another kind of bar chord called an A-shaped bar chord. So if you start with an A chord like that, and yes, I use my index finger as opposed to three fingers. Um, we'll talk more about why it's advantageous to use just your index finger. But instead of using your index finger now, use your ring finger to hold down the fourth, third, and second strings. And you're gonna play just the bottom five strings just the same way you would for an A. In fact, I'm, that's what I'm playing, I'm playing an A. But now you're gonna slide this finger up one fret and bar with your index finger across the first fret and play the bottom five strings. This is no longer A, this is now A sharp. Now you may have noticed my ring finger is almost at a little bit of a diagonal. That's one way to help yourself get a little better tone out of your A-shaped bar chords. But A-shaped bar chords are admittedly more challenging and take more flexibility than E-shaped bar chords. However, same idea here. I'm gonna take this now, this is an A-sharp, but if I move it up one fret, it changes to B. Now there are no sharps between B and C, so I just go straight to C on the third fret, C-sharp on the fourth, D after C sharp and then D sharp and then E and there are also no sharps or flats between E and F so after E just go straight to F and F sharp G G sharp and then again up on the 12th fret everything starts over so this is A again so just to review there are no sharps or flats between E and F or B and C now if we go back to A same kind of idea, if you, any variation of A, you can now translate to A-shaped bar chords, like A minor. So for A minor, in case you're not familiar, I've got my first finger on the second string of the first fret, my second finger on the fourth string of the second fret, my ring finger on the third string of the second fret. But now, just like we did for E-shaped bar chords, use your second, third, and fourth fingers instead of your first, second, and third and then slide those fingers up one fret, bar the first fret. Now this is no longer A minor, this is now A sharp minor. If I go up another fret to the second fret, now this is B minor. Again, there are no sharps between B and C, so I'm gonna go straight to C minor, and then C sharp minor, and so on and so forth. Now you might also be familiar with an A seventh. If you're not, it looks like this. You put your index finger on the fourth string of the second fret, your middle finger goes on the second string of the second fret, and you play the bottom five strings. But now, to translate this into bar chords, you're gonna hold down the same strings and frets, but you're gonna use your ring finger and your pinky. And, you guessed it, you're gonna slide it up one fret, hold down all six strings with your index finger. Now this is no longer A seventh, this is now A sharp seventh. Then I move it up one fret and it becomes B seventh, C seventh, because there are no sharps or flats between B and C, C sharp seventh, D seventh, D sharp seventh, E seventh, and there are no sharps or flats between E and F, so I go straight to F seventh. You get the idea. So those are the main kind of bar chords that you're gonna come across. There are a lot of other little variations, but if you're just getting started with bar chords, this will definitely keep you pretty busy for a while and open up a lot of possibilities for you with um, your playing because it, it greatly expands your chord vocabulary and consequently all the different songs that you can play. So I hope that this video was helpful. If it was helpful for you, please click like and subscribe and um, enjoy your bar chords. You know, I know it's, it, it's um, not always easy when the strings are not ringing out. But the thing I always tell my students is the less you play your bar chords, the worse they're going to sound. So play your bar chords. Even if they don't sound good, keep playing them. They will get better. Your hand will get more flexible. And before you know it, you'll be getting more and more tone out of your bar chords.